Hi there. I'm Jason Ayers, founder and president of Optionsource.net, and thank you for joining us to learn about bullish spread strategies. This video will focus on two types of bullish spread strategies, bull call spreads and bull put spreads. If we first look at a bull call spread, this strategy is known as a vertical spread. It involves buying a call and simultaneously selling another call with the same expiration month, but with a higher strike price. This strategy is referred to as a debit spread, as it will always require an upfront cost. The objective of the bull call spread is to benefit from an increase in the underlying at a lower cost than purchasing a call alone, as the sale of the call with the higher strike price will reduce the cost of purchasing the call with the lower strike price. Up to a specific stock price, the bull call spread strategy will react in a similar fashion as a long call position. However, unlike a long call position, the upside potential of a bull call spread is limited and profit will not increase as the stock price moves beyond the strike price of the short call position. Under this scenario, the investor would exercise the long call option and is likely to be assigned on the short call option. As a result, the investor would be buying the underlying at the low strike price and simultaneously selling the same underlying at the higher strike price. The potential profit is consequently the difference between the two strike prices less the net premium paid to establish the strategy. On the other hand, should the underlying price at expiration be below both strike prices, both options would expire worthless and the net premium paid represents the maximum risk of the strategy. When selecting the option contracts to use in the bull call spread, it is important to remember that this strategy requires the share value of the underlying stock to increase beyond the strike price of the call option sold prior to expiration. As such, the expiration date selected should allow sufficient time for the stock to make the anticipated move. When selecting strike prices, typically at the money and in the money options are considered more conservative. However, the spread will be priced higher relative to a bull call spread constructed with out-of-the-money options. On the other hand, the potential profit using out-of-the-money options is greater than with the at-the-money or in-the-money options. However, the smaller premium received from selling a more out-of-the-money call represents a disadvantage. Now let's look at an example. Let's consider a stock trading at $72 per share. An investor has a moderately bullish outlook on the stock for the next few months and elects to purchase a three-month 72-strike call option which trades at $5.70. The investor may believe that the premium is expensive and would like to offset some of the cost. Although bullish, the investor may feel that the stock will not trade higher than $80 over the next three months. Therefore, an 80-strike call option with the same expiration date is sold and a $2.60 premium is collected. The net cost of the transaction has now been reduced to $3.10. The following graph displays the risk and reward profile of the bull call spread that was established by the investor. The maximum profit potential is calculated by subtracting the debit incurred from the difference between the strike prices, which is $490. The maximum loss is limited to the net cost of the strategy, which corresponds to $310. Note that in this example, the stock must be above $75.10 by the expiration date to break even. This is calculated by adding the cost of the trade to the lower strike price. This table reflects the potential profit and loss of the bull call spread using various stock prices at expiration. Notice that the investor will not benefit from an increase of the underlying beyond the strike price of the sold call, which is $80. The potential profit is capped at $490 in this example. On the other hand, if the underlying decreases in value or stays relatively the same by expiration, the investor risks incurring the maximum loss of $310. As a reminder, the maximum loss is considerably reduced from the $5.70 to $3.10 due to the sale of the call with the higher strike price. Now let's take a look at another type of bullish spread, the bull put spread. The bull put spread is also a vertical spread strategy and as with the bull call spread, it requires the investor to sell a put option and simultaneously purchase another put option with the same expiration month but at a lower strike price. However, 
the bull put spread will not establish a debit. Instead, this strategy creates a credit due to the relationship between the price of the underlying and the two strike prices selected. As with the bull call spread, the sale of the short put is meant to offset partially the cost of purchasing the put option with the higher strike price. However, the bull put spread is generally established to generate income, as opposed to taking advantage of a directional move. One important similarity between the bullish spread using calls and the one using puts is their risk-reward profile, which is identical. The profit and losses are both limited. In the case of the bull put spread, the profit is capped at the credit collected and the loss is limited to the difference between the two strike prices less the credit collected. If the underlying stays the same or rises above the break-even point, both options will expire worthless and the investor will get to keep the credit initially collected. Under this scenario, the investor will have achieved the maximum profit potential. On the other hand, if the underlying drops, the investor runs the risk of being assigned on the short put position and taking delivery of the underlying. The investor would then have the ability to exercise the right to sell the underlying at the strike price of the long put option. Under this scenario, the investor would incur the maximum possible loss, which corresponds to the difference between the two strike prices less the net premium received. When selecting the option contracts to use in the bull put spread, it is important to remember that this strategy requires the share value of the underlying stock to remain neutral or increase above the strike price of the put option written prior to expiration so that the written put options expire worthless. Since the profitability of the position depends on the higher strike put option expiring worthless, options with near-term expiration months are typically used due to their rapid time decay. When selecting strike prices, at the money and in the money options will generate greater income. However, the higher premium received also reflects a greater chance of being assigned at expiration. Conversely, bull put spreads constructed using out of the money options have a higher probability of expiring worthless, which would allow the investor to achieve the maximum profit. However, the premium collected is smaller in comparison to at the money and in the money options. A general note to remember is that the narrower the intervals between the strike price of the option purchased and the option sold, the more neutral the investor's outlook on the underlying and the smaller the net credit received for establishing the strategy. Let's now look at an example. Let's consider the same stock we looked at earlier, which was trading at $72 per share. This time, the investor has a neutral to bullish outlook on the stock and wishes to sell a one-month 70 strike put option and by doing so collects a premium of $2. In order to limit the risk associated with selling the put option, the investor chooses to use half the premium collected to purchase a one month 65 strike put which currently trades at $1. The net credit received from establishing the bull put spread therefore corresponds to the $2 premium received from the sale of the 70 strike put less the $1 premium paid to buy the 65 strike put. The following graph displays the risk reward profile of the bull put spread that was established by the investor. The maximum profit potential corresponds to the net credit received which is $100. On the other hand, the maximum loss is being identified to $400 which is obtained by calculating the difference between the strike prices less the credit received. Note that in this example, the stock must be above $69 by expiration to break even. This is calculated by subtracting the net credit received from the strike price of the short put position. This table reflects the potential profit and loss of the bull put spread using various stock prices at expiration. Notice that regardless of how high the underlying appreciates in value, the maximum profit of the bull put spread is capped at the premium collected. Therefore, as long as the underlying remains above the strike price of the put option sold, both options will expire worthless and the investor will keep the $100 in premium initially collected. If the stock is trading below the break-even point on expiration, the investor will experience a loss. However, losses are limited to the difference between the strike prices less the premium collected, which is $400 in this example. 
When deciding which spread strategy is the most appropriate to use, investors must consider several factors including their objectives, outlook, and risk tolerance. Since the bull call spread and the bull put spread have the identical risk reward profiles, the main consideration when implementing bullish spread strategies will be the investor's objective and outlook. A bull call spread requires the underlying stock to increase in value before expiration. This suggests that the investor is looking to profit from a long call position and may wish to offset the cost of the expensive option contract by selling a call option, which creates the bull call spread strategy. This strategy is sensitive to time depreciation as enough time must be given for the underlying to move. Conversely, a bull put spread may be used if the investor believes that the underlying is likely to remain neutral. The investor should have a neutral to bullish outlook but should not expect a profit from an increase in the underlying share value as maximum profit is realized upon the options expiring worthless. With that being said, the passage of time will play in the investor's favor. If we look at the potential profit and risk of the examples we used earlier, it demonstrates that typically the risk associated with a bull call spread is less than the risk of a bull put spread. Also, the profit potential of the bull call spread in relation to the risk associated with the position tends to be greater in comparison to the bull put spread.